All right, the day has finally come for the Neo Retro build. Very excited about this. I've got two of them. I've got a 20 inch and a 24 inch, uh, starting with the 20 inch, so we'll do that. I'm excited, gonna get this underway. Had the headset installed and I need to install the bottom bracket. That's where we're gonna start. Stoked about this build. It's got some unique pieces to it in that I didn't go with strictly BMX race components. I did a significantly box build, but uh, there are a couple of pieces that are um, either mountain bike componentry, a, little, a couple pieces that are more freestyle oriented. And anyway, I uh, just wanted my own personal uh, unique flair to the bike. So anyway, we're going to get this rolling, get this build underway, and I think you're going to love it. I know that I am. Let's go. First piece of the equation is the M35 bottom bracket. So we'll start there. The box M35 crank comes with a tool to put it in place. So I was worried about having to go out and grab something. It actually comes with the tool to connect to a three inch drive, three eighths inch drive ratchet and uh, to get that threaded. All right, next we'll move into the M35 crank, 35 millimeter spindle. It is huge. I have to say that it is enormous. So got the bottom bracket installed, uh, fits great, uh, cinches down really well, and then the M35 crank. So again, huge, lightweight, it's supposed to be incredibly stiff, but I will say that the finish looks fantastic. Crank has been installed, we'll move to the fork. The X5 tapered, inch and an eighth on top, inch and a half on bottom. Obviously, if you're familiar with tapered, you know exactly what that means. The X5, 20 millimeter dropouts, Simultaneously, we'll be putting on the Profile Stem, the Profile Moleville, the top load, and I'm going with the blue because it coordinates so well. I don't know if you knew this. Um, the build, I'll show this off in, in a few moments, but the blue actually coordinates with the blue of the BMX Breakthrough logo. The orange coordinates with the orange in that logo, and the hot pink billet BMX chain tensioners coordinate with the pink in the logo. One more mention as I get ready to install this all, is that the Neo Retro does come with a tapered headset. So it's press-in cups. As I mentioned, I had the headset installed. It's not a tapered integrated headset. It is a press-in and it comes with the headset, um, comes with the sealed cartridge bearings, and um, it also comes with a bottom bracket adapter. I did not use that adapter. I ended up going with the B52 bottom bracket rather and the M35 crank, but you can put a normal 68 millimeter uh, Euro bottom bracket in with the adapter that it comes with. I'm gonna put the bars on. I went with some s and XLT race bars, nine inch, and they are 29 inches wide. I think they're gonna be absolutely perfect for this build. There's nothing quite like s and bars. So we'll get these things on. Box two chain ring. And then the wheel build with box one rims, a box two front hub with a 20 mil through axle and a box three rear hub with a 10 mil rear axle. This is the disc brake adapter, dropout adapter for the 10 mil. And it's got a bolt to keep it on and allow it to slide, but stay put while the back wheel is off of the bike and then the post mount disc adapter. So we'll get that solved. All right, so I got the wheels done, got them built, true laced, or laced, built, true tensioned. Anyway, I'm um, gonna get the tires on there. I've got some box two 20 by 1.75s. I've got some box rim tape to put on there as well. And then I went with the titanium cog for the rear wheel, a 16 on the 20 inch. And then I ended up finding a uh, rainbow oil slick color uh, disc brake rotor instead of using the box one, which was, uh, which was great, but I kinda wanted the color on there. So. Get those installed and then put them on the bike.
The thing that I wanted to hone in on and talk about is the dropout adapter and the Billet BMX chain tensioners, which are incredible. And one of the things that I will point out is that the adjustment screw is hidden inside of there. So regardless of how far out it comes, um, it will continue to slide the, the I, don't, I don't know what you'd call that, but the adapter inside of there. Um, it'll slide it forward, but the bolt will never stick out of the chain tensioner. And then you've got the dropout adapter, the 10 mil uh, here, there's the 15 mil available and the 20 mil as well. Um, but set the wheel up in there, take the bolt, go through the chain tensioner, and then through the dropout adapter, which sits on the inside of the dropout, and then thread it into the hub. One of the key benefits to this design is that when you slide the whole dropout forward, or when you slide the rear axle forward, because of the way that these dropout adapters are designed, is that the whole disc brake now moves with it so that your uh, you won't have to readjust your caliper, which is actually really cool. About to lose the bike. Don't have to continue readjusting the caliper because the caliper moves with that eight mil Allen bolt to tighten it down. Make sure that the chain tensioners are in the correct place. There we go. And obviously because there's no chain, it doesn't matter. Um, nothing's in place, but that's how those work. All right, time for the seat. The Colt Vans collaboration seat. It's heavy. It's definitely not a race seat, but it had the style that I wanted. It was cool, and it adds a unique flair, especially if you're familiar with all the BMX breakthrough stuff that we've been working on. There it is. It is built, put on some E13 pedals. It's all built up, ready to go. So I guess I'll go ride it. I got Svensson Goman, Jay Hooks, and Victor Tomano. 557 by Svensson Goman out in front. Okay, Going up for the ice cream factory start. team out of Belgium. Coming back to the line, it'll be Svensson Goman getting there for one of your transfers. I got one spot left. That'll go to your 74. 